let's start to dig, dig, dig and make custom tools for Minecraft. New topics added to the Forge and Fabric courses, such as tameable and writable entities, projectiles, throwable projectiles and boats, as well as first steps to biomes and dimensions. Courses linked in the description below. Oh, Ravy Fans is back in Shelly once more, and in this tutorial, we're gonna be adding custom tools to Minecraft. This will include a pickaxe, an axe, a shovel, a sword, and last and certainly least, of course, a hole. For this, we're going to navigate to our item package. And first of all, we need a new Java class. Namely, this is going to be an enum. So we're going to choose the enum right here. And this is the mod tool material class over here or enum in this case. And this is going to be very interesting indeed, because what we'll do is this will implement the tool material over here from that Minecraft item. Hit tab to autocomplete, hover over this and we'll implement the methods. And you can see those are quite a few methods here. And we're just going to implement them. And you can see right now they're all zero, zero and null and all of that. That's totally fine. We're going to fix that in just a moment. Because what we'll do is we will actually add those as fields to this particular enum. You can see this lonely semicolon over here. We're going to populate that with something in just a moment as well. But first of all, we need for each one of our different methods here, a return value, basically. So we need a private final int and we'll call this the mining level. And then we basically just continue to go through this. So this would be the mining level and so on and so forth. So we need a couple of integers, two floats over here. And then finally, a supplier of type ingredient over here. We'll call this the repair ingredient. And then from the top. So the first one is the mining level. The second one is the item durability. There you go. The third one is the first float, which is the mining speed, obviously controlling how fast you are when using this particular type of tool. Then the attack damage should also be fairly self-explanatory. And then the a little bit more elusive enchantability, something like that. I think that that enchantability, I think that that's written correctly. This is a little bit more elusive, as I've said, because this sort of just determines what type of enchantments are going to be on this particular tool material or how likely they are. We're going to hover over any of them and say add constructor parameter. And then we want to actually select all of them. So you just hold shift and click on the bottom one and then every one of them should be selected. Then you just hit OK. And all of a sudden, bam, we got ourselves a new and cool constructor over here. And now we just need to make sure that everything here is returned correctly. So do pay attention in the durability. You want to return this dot item durability in the get mining speed multiplier. We want to return this dot mining speed. In the, this attack damage, we want to return this dot attack damage. And there's actually a typo. If you have a typo in there somewhere, not an issue. Click on the actual name, press shift F6. And now you can rename this. So for example, I'm just going to put the cursor right here. And you can see I've typed an A and everywhere where this is used, an A has all of a sudden spawned over here. We're going to hit OK. And that's going to be fine. Now we're returning the attack damage here as well. Get mining level, this dot mining level. And then down here is the enchantability, this dot enchantability. And then lastly, instead of a null, extremely important, we want to return this dot repair material dot get. Don't forget the get because then, well, I mean, then you're going to get an error. So you have to add the get over here. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And with this, I think that should be everything that we need. So now we can actually make the tool material. Now, this is, of course, a sort of an advanced enum, which has some fields included. So for this, what we'll do is we will make the new type over here. This is going to be the Ruby. And of course, we need to, well, create this. You can see we need to supply it with a mining level, a durability and so on and so forth. Everything that we've defined right here. So the first thing you could do is you can either do a mining levels, this one right here, dot, and then you can choose one of those. So you can see stone has mining level one, netherite four, wood zero, hand has minus one and so on and so forth. Or what you can do is you can also just pass in an integer, for example, five. This will give our Ruby tool material actually one mining level higher than netherite, which is something that a lot of people want to try. So let's just do five over here and we'll show you how you can then also define how certain blocks can ever only be mined with that custom tool material. It's actually way more straightforward than you might think. And let's just add some numbers over here. Item durability 650. Let's do mining speed 4.5. I think that's going to be OK. Attack damage something like 3.5. Enchantability could be a little bit higher. And then a supplier of an ingredient dot of items mod items dot ruby, of course. And that is actually all that we need here in this case. Awesome. As with a normal item, if you wanted to add a second mod material, you don't need the entire class again. Only thing you need to do is just add a second enum. So maybe it's going to be something like the sapphire over here. You just have to add this as well, just for the sake of argument. Adding in the same thing, you can see the last one always ends with a semicolon. And in between, they have a comma. Very basic Java stuff. If there's anything unclear there, highly recommend to brush up a little bit on that as well. And then what we can actually do is you can click on tool material, press control H to bring up the tool materials class over here. 
double click on this and you can see these are all the numbers for the vanilla tool materials which can be quite useful to take a look at basically to so that you know okay roughly this is roughly the item durability for netherite right then mining speed so you can see that these numbers are actually quite you know quite a lot bigger than the ones that we have to find over here but that's of course totally fine the numbers always something for you to play around with but that is actually the entirety of this class highly recommended to also check this out in the description below in the github repository but now we can actually create the items in our more items class for this i'm just going to copy over the ruby staff and i'm going to make this the ruby pickaxe over here and of course the name here has to change as well ruby under ruby underscore pickaxe there you go and this is not an item this is a pickaxe item and a pickaxe item actually takes in four parameters the first one is the tool material which is going to be mod tool material dot ruby and then the second parameter is the attack damage. So for a, for a pickaxe, you know, it should, probably shouldn't be too crazy. Maybe two, maybe one. And then the attack speed is fine. And then here, instead of a max count, you actually don't want to give it anything. No extra item settings are needed. And that is actually the pickaxe. And that is the pickaxe added. Now we can duplicate this five times. And we can then add the axe. And we can also add the shovel. And we can also add the sword and last but certainly least the ruby hoe over here now always make sure to change the name here as well right in the in the register item call extremely important and also this is now an axe item instead of a pickaxe item so double triple quadruple check that the pickaxe item is a pickaxe item that you change the name right here and then you change the type of item right here as well otherwise it's not going to work and then of course the numbers you can always change the numbers around however which way you like Highly recommended to just play around with this. And then you're going to probably find some numbers that are going to fit your mod. The shovel, of course, called Ruby Shovel. And once again, this is not a pickaxe item. This is a shovel item. There we go. The, the rest here is going to stay the same. Basically, just maybe changing the numbers here again. Then the Ruby Sword, that's going to be an interesting one because this is a sword item. And of course, the attack damage is going to be a little bit higher. Maybe the attack speed is going to be fine. Maybe a three would be okay. And then last but certainly least, the Ruby Ho. And this is going to be a whole item over here. And attack damage. I mean, when you get hit with this, you get damage back. Okay, no, but it's going to be a zero and a zero on both counts. I think that that's a very fair assessment. And with that, we actually have all of the items added. Now, of course, some other things are still needed, such as, for example, adding it to the item group. So let's do that. All right, and with that, all of them added to the item group. Let's also add the translation. All right, nothing too crazy. Should be fairly self-explanatory. And then also the textures. Those are also going to be available to you in the description below for download. So no worries at all. Let's just add those. There we go. And of course, now we still need the models. And also the interesting thing with the block tag, let's actually look at the block tag first, because we, of course, have to find the Ruby tool material as mining level five, meaning that we have to now specifically define that certain blocks might only be able to be mined with that specific tool. So let, what we can do is we can just duplicate the tool material four, which was for netherite, and we can just change this to needs underscore tool underscore level underscore five. And with that, now in theory, the endstone ruby ore well, would be mineable with both, which of course is not quite something you want. So let's just add the sound block in here as a test in this case. And then now the sound block can only ever be mined and will drop itself when you mine it with, with a ruby pickaxe in this case. Then the mod model provider, the models are incredibly easy. Once again, what you want to do is you want to say this is going to be the ruby pickaxe over here. And then extremely important, models dot handheld not generated otherwise you will not get the sort of 3d effect in third person that you are used to so do keep in mind that it has to be handheld double check that as well and that's going to be the axe over here this is going to be the shovel we also have the sword and last the hoe there we go and that should in theory be everything that we need for this that's going to be all for the recipes once again you can simply use the shape recipe builder to create your custom recipes for this should be fairly self-explanatory at this point it's not really that big of a deal or that complicated and with that we can just go to a data gen let's run the data gen over here and let's get all of our json files created and once that is done we can jump into the game and see our tools for the first time. All right, finally, us back in Minecraft. And as you can see, all of our different tools have been added to the game and they will work, well, what in whatever way you, you like, basically. You can tell the ground over here. We can go on and make paths and we can even mine certain things like, for example, the sound block and it should drop itself over here. There you go. And we'll even try it with netherite and you will see that in theory, this should not drop itself. Let's take a look. And there we go. That's, of course, the mining level. And you can see all of the rest is still going to work. And yeah, that is pretty much custom tools added to Minecraft. All right, that's already it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll make a custom armor set. Don't miss that. And I hope to see you there. So, yeah.